In today's video, I'm gonna take this mass-produced Wayfair piece of furniture and give it an upgrade, a more modern look. I'm gonna use paint to do a faux marble top on it and use a earthy, beautiful, rich brown on the bottom. This makeover is gonna be a lot of fun and it starts right now. So you can see, we are not dealing with a fine piece of furniture today. This is mass produced. It's not wood. Um, it is, it looks like it has held up pretty well. It was made in 2012. We're gonna try to give it at least 10 more years of life. I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a modern look by doing that faux marble top and doing a beautiful on-trend color on the bottom. It does have some damage on the top here, so I'm gonna have to do some sanding repairs, but of course we need to start off just by cleaning it. I got this from my neighbor, so it's not super dirty, but I have some white lightning in a spray bottle and I'm gonna clean it off. I'm also removing the hardware. I won't be reusing this because one of them is broken and I have a more modern idea in mind for the hardware. After you use your cleaning solution on your furniture, it is always important to wipe it down with some clean water afterwards so you don't have any soap residue left over on your furniture. I'm using a medium grit sandpaper to smooth out this area that was damaged. The finish got completely lifted off of this, so I don't need this to be completely sanded back. I just want it to be even between the part that is damaged and the part that's not damaged. I've done this corrective sanding on the top to smooth this out so my surface is gonna be nice and even. Now I'm gonna take some fine sandpaper and I'm gonna give the whole thing a scuff sand so that my paint will stick really well. Because this is a factory finish and it's pretty glossy, it's important to scuff sand this down before I add my silk all-in-one paint. It's just gonna adhere better. So I'm using a regular sandpaper to get the flat surfaces and then I'm using one of my foam pads to get in all the decorative curved areas. If you didn't wanna spend all this time scuff sanding, you could also use a primer here for adhesion like Slick Stick. I've had pretty good success putting this paint over factory finishes like this as long as it's scuff sanded. So that's what I'm doing. And before we move on to the next step, I'm just taking some water and a rag and removing that dust. I've got my damage all smoothed out on the top. Before I add my paint and start doing my faux marble finish, I wanna prime this since I have some of this whatever this is. It's not wood, it's a, who knows what it is, probably particle board or MDF. I wanna seal that before I start painting. So I've grabbed my boss, which is my primer, and I have it in white because that's gonna give me a nice, beautiful base for my white paint. I'm only gonna be using this primer on the top portion here to prep it for my faux marble look. I am using a smooth roller. This is a foam roller to give me a smooth look on top. I think it's just gonna work better for doing that marble look. I don't wanna have a lot of brush strokes. I want it to be really smooth. So that's the reason I'm using the roller. This primer needs to dry for two hours before I can add my second coat. So I'm gonna move on to painting the bottom of my furniture. So I've picked silk because I love using silk. It's an all-in-one paint, so it's gonna bond to this. It's got a primer in it. It has stain blocking properties. Um, it's the paint and then a sealer in one, so it's gonna help me get this done a lot faster. I've never used this color before. This is umber and it's a beautiful rich brown, which is so on trend right now. So while my primer's drying, I'm gonna work my way up from the bottom to the top and start painting the base. Silk is definitely one of my favorite paints to work with. I love that it's an all-in-one, so it has a built-in top coat, a water-based primer in it to help with bleed through. I'm not gonna have bleed through here because this is a factory piece, but I love that it's smooth, self-leveling, and once it dries down, it's really durable. It's going to resist mildew and grease and stains and scuffs. So it's definitely one of my favorites, and this is a new color for me, and it is turning out beautiful. I 
always get asked the question, why do you paint with the drawers in? On this one, I really would love to take the drawers out, but I can't. It has these pegs in the back that stop the drawers from coming out. And normally I can pull those out with pliers, but they're in too far. So it's gonna be too difficult to get these out and then get them back in. So we're just painting with the drawers in and it's okay. I can work around it. The brush I'm using is a synthetic brush. I like to use those when I am using silk. And this is the Angled Mini, which is probably the most versatile brush and the one you see me use the most often because it can get into angles and corners and details really well. You don't have to add water or spray silk to get it to move around your furniture. It's really smooth and it's a lot thinner than some typical furniture paints that you've probably worked with in the past. I like it a lot for that reason. It's just nice and smooth and levels out. You do wanna be a little bit more careful as you're going along and watching out for those drips and globs just because it is a little bit more runny than a typical furniture paint it can pull up around details and edging so just keep an eye out for that now that I'm done with that first coat I'm ready to put on my second coat of primer on the top My first coat is dry. Before you put on your second coat, this is a really good opportunity to just look around and make sure you don't have any drips or globs. If you have any of those, you just wanna sand them out and buff them out before you start that second coat. Also a tip, in between coats, I always like to put my brushes in a Ziploc bag or wrap them with clear wrap so that they don't dry out in that way, less cleaning up your brush. Back for day two, I ended up doing three coats on here and I think that's because I was going from a really light color to a dark color. That just happens when you're going from a dark color to a light color, you usually need around three coats. So I have super good coverage now. This is all dry. I don't have to top coat this. So this portion of the dresser is done. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna use some paint to do a faux marble top. So I'm get, gonna get everything taped off and then get a white base on top of this. So I'm using this top piece of tape just as a spacer. It's like the perfect height to make this a marble top since I don't have an overhang or an overlay with this top piece. If you did, that would be a lot easier, but I'm kind of having to create my own. So this top piece is my spacer tape. And then this tape I'm putting below that is actually gonna be the tape that protects my piece when I paint the rest of this white. Now that I've got that top all taped off and figured out, I'm just adding some plastic wrap to the bottom. This actually has a masking tape attached to the top, which makes it super easy to put on here and it's gonna protect my piece really well. I don't wanna get any of that white or gray paint on my beautifully painted brown base. trying to get as crisp of a line as possible. So I like to seal my tape just so the paint doesn't seep through because what actually makes it stick to the furniture is getting it wet. So I just take a little towel, dampen it just a little bit, and then I just run it over my tape and that'll seal it. So hopefully none of that paint will seep through. gonna add some water to this you saw some chunks coming out of my can there and really smooth this out so that it's gonna flow nicely and evenly on the top I'm using that same roller I used yesterday because my primer is water-based I was able to rinse it out and reuse this to put on the chalk paint I had some areas that the roller couldn't quite reach, so I'm using an artist brush to get into there. I didn't wanna squeeze the roller in there because I feared that would bleed through and make it look not natural. I want this to look like a top, so that really helped me get in those little areas. This is my first time painting marble. I watched some videos last night, and I'm basically just gonna wing it because there's no one way to do this 
What I have done is I've pulled a dark gray and a light gray, and this is what I'm gonna use to do my veining. I'm gonna water these down a little bit, and then I have four different little artist brushes to make my veining. And then I also have a sponge to kind of blend things in. So I'm gonna mix up my colors and just go for it. I watered these down as well because you want them pretty thin so that they're easy to work with. If you're a little apprehensive about doing this, I feel you because stuff like this gives me a little bit of anxiety. I like to have a little bit of a plan going into it. So what you can do is just Google some Carrera marble images and pick which one you want and kind of try to imitate that. I really like this one um, that I found here. It's not too much veining, so I'm gonna kind of try to follow these patterns. It's the exact same size as my top. I'm not gonna do it like exactly, exactly, but I'm just gonna kind of use this as a guide to figure out where I wanna put my veining. To get started, I'm misting the entire top just so my paint can move around. I'm starting with my lightest color and I'm taking the biggest artist brush I have and just making some veining across the top. Um, you don't have, this doesn't have to be perfect. You wanna try to swirl it and make it look na like natural movement. Um, this was definitely the scariest part of this. I watched a few videos on people doing this and everybody has different techniques. So I decided to just like not overthink it and just go for it. Um, so you are watching me process this all in real time. I did drag that veining over the side so that it could carry on and look like one big stone piece. Once I got all that veining where I wanted it, I grabbed my mister and a foam brush and I just started fanning and patting these out in every direction, just kind of trying to blow them out and diffuse them across the white paint. Looking back, I probably should have done one section at a time because my paint started drying. So I had to keep kind of misting it and misting my sponge to help move that paint around and diffuse it out. I also grabbed some absorbent lint-free rags and kind of patted that area out as well. Once I got those where I wanted them, I grabbed my foam brush again, and this time I just added a little bit of white paint to it, sprayed it some more, and that way I could go in and touch up any areas that I felt like were too dark. Then I wanted to add some of that dark veining, so I grabbed my dark hurricane gray and just started following some of the outside portions of that first gray that I've laid down. And again, making them curvy, wanted to have lots of movement in them and make them look natural. This is gonna look really dark next to all the fanning out and diffusing you've already done. So don't freak out because you're gonna go back in with that sponge. Again, I don't have any paint on it. I rinsed it off and just, it's a little bit damp. So I'm just trying to blend these out um, naturally into the other gray paint. This time I learned my lesson and I did one section at a time so that paint didn't dry down. After doing that process, they still looked a little bit too dark to me. So I got just a little bit of white paint on here and some water and tried to blend them out with a smaller detail brush. This was pretty labor intensive and took a while, but I was just being really fussy with it and one of these blended out really nicely and this technique worked well. Once I got all that dark veining done, I went back in with a little bit of that white paint and tried to blend out any areas I felt like were too dark. Okay, I think I'm done messing with this. I've been doing this for an hour. I think you could sit here and do it for hours and hours. I definitely recommend stepping back and you know taking a look from across the room to see how it looks because when you're up close to it you're always going to be super perfectionist about it but like i said first time doing it so i have a couple of key learnings um, i originally used this big artist brush to make my initial veining i think next time i wouldn't do that i think i would start with one of these smaller brushes and just build up from there 
because I started with a really big veining and there's no way to shrink it back down. I think it's always easier to build back up. Um, I like this little angled brush to do the dark veining with the dark color. And then this little tiny artist brush is really great just for kind of blending and feathering things out. And then the sponge is kind of your best friend. I used it a bunch of different ways. I put paint on it, I put water on it. This is really gonna help you blend everything out. So again, not perfect, but it is my first time. I learned a lot and hopefully next time I do it, it looks even better. I will say, now that I've taken the tape off, I'm a bigger fan of the top. I think I was being a little hard on myself, you guys. It's always a good idea to step back, take a look at your piece from across the room. It looks very nice. So we're ready to top coat. We wanna seal that top to protect all that beautiful work that I did to marble it. I'm gonna use clear coat and gloss. I've actually never used this top coat before, but I wanna use gloss to make it look really shiny and really similar to stone. So I am going to pour this in a separate bowl and then I'm gonna put it on with that same foam brush all cleaned off. This is my first time using gloss and I loved the way it applied. It's a really thin, so it goes on really nice and smooth. You wanna just really build it up because it is so thin. So use a really thin layer on your first coat and then I'm gonna let this dry in between coats and do three coats on top of here to let it get some really good protection. And remember the base of my furniture already has a built-in top coat on it. So I'm only having to top coat this top portion. Sometimes it pays to be a hoarder, you guys. I have had this hardware, I think for almost two years. I bought it for another project. I just happened to have nine. It's super square and modern, so I think it's gonna go perfectly with this new look on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all of them on. These were a little bit hard to get level, but I finally figured out how to get all these on here. And I don't know what I bought these for, but they were just perfect for this piece of furniture. I can't believe it turned out so well. Just to remind you, here is what I started off with and here it is now. Well, I decided to drag this one in my house because I thought I would like the way it looks in here and I really do love the way it looks in here. So I'm probably gonna try to find a place for it in my house. Um, it reminds me so much of my Ikea hack that I did, but it was way less work. Um, so I had fun doing this. I love the way that it turned out. I hope you guys try this marbling technique on the top. Again, I have lots of things to learn, but we have to try things before we're good at it. That's how we get good at it. And I think that you could practice on just a scrap piece of board or a piece of cardboard. So you don't have to commit to doing it on your furniture. It would be awesome to do a little practice before. So I hope you guys enjoyed this makeover. I know I had a lot of fun and I will see you guys in my next video.